Hello everyone, this is gonna be a little bit awkward to start with because my voice is bouncing off of the thing and also my desk is messy because I was over on Twitch starting to build a Gundam model kit today. But this video is about the Lego art series, The Great Wave, full name, The Great Wave off Kanagawa. And this cost me $100 US, you can find it tagged on the video. I built it live on Twitch as well. It comes with 1,810 pieces. With the frame, we're looking at a width of just over 52 centimeters, which is a little over 20 inches. But if you're not including the frame, you're just including the print insert there, that's about 38 centimeters in width or a little bit under 15 inches. So for scale to a minifigure, it's sizable and it's actually sized very, very close to the original painting, which is which is kind of a special thing and, and I think was a, a really nice decision. First impressions for me are much more positive than I expected. I This is my first time doing one of these art sets at all. I generally dislike the idea of the art sets that are just a whole bunch of one by one tiles, but this is a lot more than that. Around the back, you can see that the print itself is built on the standard art base plates, the 16 by 16 by one and I believe one third, basically Technic bricks. And they introduced a new color of light nougat or the old uh, light flesh tone color for some of these panels. And then just a couple of the black ones are there. You actually insert this into the frame right near the end. The frame gets assembled together very, very quickly because it's made fairly minimally, but it's pretty effective, but it's nice to actually set that in there and have the option to take this out of the frame fairly easily by just pulling some Technic pins. I actually forgot to push one of them in over there. Yeah, it's, it's a nice little design feature. And like with other large art pieces from Lego, they include these specialized Technic pieces that act as hangers. So there's one here and there's one on the other side. You can place those in, in different places. Again, they're just attached with Technic pins, but they're very effective and mean that this is ready to be displayed on a wall. The outer frame is plain tan, and I did notice right at the end that a number of these tiles are a slightly different color, slightly darker and slightly more yellowish. So you basically do have two colors. I didn't see that with the initial build along the way, but the very last layer, unfortunately, the most important one for display, uh, does have some slight variation, which isn't the worst thing, but it, th we're not supposed to have that variation. You know, it makes it look a little bit more real realistic, some would say, and more natural, but all of these pieces are supposed to be the exact same color. So I did want to call that out. More important though than the frame to me and how this looks is the mat, this whole section right here, all the way around in white. I think the proportions of that are really, really well chosen and I think that they really help to accentuate and bring a lot more class to this as a as a model. Uh, it just it really really adds to it. There are two surface textures here with the use of the regular tiles in here in one by and also two by compared to the six by six tiles which are a softer plastic and have a slightly different texture. Also a visible mold mark in the middle but I, I personally find that after this is fully assembled, I don't notice any of that stuff. As I look at this from different angles and everything, it doesn't stand out to me. Now, with as much light as I have in the studio here behind this, coming up from behind this, you may notice a little hint of light coming through there. <laughs> as long as you don't have strong studio lights behind this, you know, if you're not trying to hang it in the middle of a room with lights on the other side, you're not going to see that. The backdrop of the painting is done with just one by one tiles directly against the large art plates. And you can see very clearly the switchover from the, the different colors in the background right here, uh, which forms a little bit of a, a weird, almost horizon effect, even though it's not supposed to be a horizon. That's not the best transition there, but would have required an entire additional layer to smooth that out, to have something in between there. These little heads of the fishermen on their boats are printed. It's just one single print duplicated many times, and it's fairly accurate to how, how it was actually, how those were actually depicted uh, in, in the original painting. It's a little bit uh, Studio Ghibli looking, especially with this build for them, but it's about right. And you see that there's a lot of texture here. There's a lot of depth as the the plates were built up different shapes of plates 
tiles, and also some white colored leaves in here. You're going to see another texture piece used on the other side. I personally found this to be really satisfying as someone who really did not look forward to any of the previous major art sets that are just dots or <laughs> regular tiles and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and, hundreds and thousands of them. And this was enjoyable. It also helps that this is not the world map. It doesn't have 11,000 pieces or 12,000, however many ridiculous number of pieces in the first place. So the pacing feels good and you make good progress towards the end goal. This also uses birds, it's just plain unprinted white birds for texture, as well as some of the one by two corner notched uh, curve pieces in there. And again, more more shaping from different sizes and types of wedge plates. And up here in the corner, the signature and the, uh, the description of the work or the name of the work, these are two separate individual printed tiles that are unique, obviously, to the set. And the quality of the print there is very good. So I'm happy with that. The only thing that I don't like uh, quality wise, well, the only two things that I don't like are, again, this transition right in here, it, it feels a little bit too stark. And then the shaping of Mount Fuji itself, which is actually the, the main subject of this, the anchor of the entire series of paintings, is a little bit off. That needed somehow to be notched at the top. It doesn't stand out to me too much. I can see what it's supposed to be, especially from a distance. But just like with the architecture skyline set that Lego did, where they depicted Mount Fuji in the background as well, again, the shaping is just, it's not there. It's not, it's not quite right. Otherwise, I'm happy with this. I like it. I like the little texture that's that's used with the, the toothed, uh, modified dark tan plate pieces. And the whole thing feels good. It feels good to have it. It has a, a respectable amount of weight, but not too much. It doesn't have a whole lot of flex. It did warp a little bit during the initial build, but all that worked its way out once it got all added together with the frame and everything. The frame all connects together. And just in general, for someone who was a total skeptic on this, I was only pleasantly surprised all the way through with the whole process and with the end result. Speaking of the end, this is what I was left with for spare parts. Always got to love spare prints, but up closer you can see that the white color is not quite as white as it ought to be. You know, it's another one of those cases where they should have put another layer down, I think, ideally, especially for a premium set within a premium range like this. Now, the premium price I paid for this, once again, was $100 US. It's 100 euros, comes to 90 pounds UK and varies from there. For 1800 pieces, <laughs> price to part ratio is a thing that I don't care about. Amount of stuff, building experience, feeling of the expanse of it and the quality of it, what it gives to me now that it's done, all feels good. I would like it to be cheaper, sure. I don't feel like it's a ripoff. It's really, really good. I looked up prices of cheap prints for, you know, just basically copies, uh, real cheap copies on on canvas of just this, of just the, the painting itself. You can get those for anywhere from 10 to 30 bucks, you know, depending upon quality level and, and amount of canvas and actual actual mater material at close to original size. With a frame, you're going to start for the full size. You're going to start at 50. And that's kind of going to be a little bit dodgy. 75 is more like where you're going to see yourself landing for a cheap frame. I didn't see any frames out there that looked this good. I want this. This is right with that much mat and everything. Most of them don't put that much mat on there or they have different proportions of mat around there. It kind of messes with the, the Zen of it all. This is, this is actually thought through, uh, very, very nicely. I personally think, uh, but yeah, 75 and then it goes up to maybe like 150 or so. So that's that's kind of the range we're looking at as far as competitive analysis. What else you could get for this, for your own space to, to have. And those are going to be more accurate. They're going to show, you know, the especially the slightly more expensive ones are going to show brush strokes and everything. And they're going to have texture, surface texture, which is good. Uh, but I think that Lego, this is one of those rare cases where the Lego version of a thing compared to a, a, a decent duplicate 
isn't too bad from a from a value perspective. Usually in these comparisons, the real thing or a copy of a real thing just completely destroys Lego on on the value side. And most of the time, it makes more logical sense to get the non Lego thing. In this case, I think it's actually a fair fight because the build experience of this is really interesting. If you look at this from a, from a distance, you're not going to notice that it's Lego and you do get that extra depth here, which most non Lego things are non Lego versions of this are not going to give you where it's mostly a flat, you know, it looks like just a, just a print on the wall, but then you get that depth. That's kind of cool. And that is special. And that is a value add in addition to, of course, the, the building process. So all in all, I pretty, I pretty much like this as is had a, you know, a couple little things about it that I don't like, and certainly they need to get a lot better about their consistency of, uh, of color. It, it's an ongoing problem. It's something that I don't think the world's highest quality consumer plastics manufacturer uh, should be delivering to people. Um, it is not a only the best sort of situation. And so I'll continue to call that out when I see it. Otherwise though, ah, these prints are great. Those could have been a little bit better, but I just, I, I like this. It, it gives me the warm and fuzzies. Doesn't feel like I got ripped off. Doesn't feel nonsensical to have this in Lego form. It's just good. Your mileage may vary, of course, you know, come to your own conclusions based on your own perceptions of value and what you're most interested in. But I think if you like this or if you're on the fence, you might be, you might be okay with it. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Thank you much for watching. I hope that you've enjoyed this and hope that it provides some value to you to help you to make your own decisions or at the very least that it was some idle content to watch while you're doing or listen to while you're doing something else. Thank you for being here and I'll talk to you again very soon.